Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Parksy, your coach of the NIR. It is sorry, I'm just turning down my music. Today, what we're going to be doing is going over my week four battle against Flyzone, coach of the Sark Skins, Sark Skins. Now, that name is very hard to say, by the way. I just want to clear that up because I probably butchered the name horribly. But my next three weeks of the PBA are monstrous, assuming nobody leaves, which, you know, there isn't that high of a chance, but. The, my next three matchups this week I will be going against Flyzen, who is two and one. I, next week I'm going against Ash's Claw, who currently is two and one. And then week six I will be going against Request, also who is two and one currently. Of course they can lose their matches and then it'll be a bit easier. But currently I'm going against one of the top teams of the league. I think he's fourth or fifth right now. I am the number one team of the league, so that's very scary because I've never been anywhere close to first. In leagues before, although as I do say most times, this is only my second league that I've ever competed in, so you know, it's not really, it doesn't really hold much weight when I say, oh yeah, I, I've never came first in a league before because I've only participated in one. If you guys do enjoy the video at any moment, leave a like and a subscribe comment down below. I read all comments, I've seen, I've seen a shiny commenting down on my videos. I, I see, I see. But uh, our opponent flies and he's got a pretty scary team, especially offensive wise because he's got a lot of setup sweepers. His first mon is Guard Chomp, Good Stealth Rock Setter, pretty fast at base 102, and it can also be a Sword Stance Sweeper, Choice Bands by this guy, as well as Choice Scarf. Scarf's the one that I'm fearing the most from his team. If he brings Scarf Guard Chomp like Rocks or Maldo, that could be pretty scary. He's got Z Azelf, Azelf being a very diverse Pokemon, being able to get access to a lot of moves. Also gives access to Stealth Rocks if he wants. He's got Jolzeon, does a very fast electric type Pokemon. Doesn't hit particularly hard, usually has to rely on Choice Specs or Life Orb to, to get like, a pretty bad defogger, I'm not gonna lie. Takes 25% from rocks and essentially has to defog and roost or roost and defog when it's sent on rocks almost every single time. Then Mega, a pretty scary Pokemon especially because you can't really switch into it well if it is a Specs Tinting uh, Lens variant. It's typing however means that it loses half its health to rocks which are going to be pretty nice. And Armaldo next up, my baby Armaldo if I can flick to it. There we are. Our, our baby Armaldo Unfortunately, we are not uh, having Armaldo as our mascot in this league, but Armaldo, I, I love him very well. Good knockoff user, very good defensive folk, with an assault vest can be pretty good on the special defensive side. Just very good low tier rapid spinner, however, it is 25% weak, weak to rocks. I think the thing that Armaldo really hates about itself is that I guess no reliable recovery. So once you knock it down enough times, it will just die. We've got my Lodic here, very scary Pokemon. Game more Marvel skill. It's a nightmare for my team to deal with. Um, my Lodic just in general is annoying. If it is special defensive, it it, it walls my it can even wall my Zapdos. That's how uh, scary it is. Uh, the next Pokemon is Chandler, a great special wall breaker. Probably one of the best special wall breakers. Which is an Omega base 145 special attack. Spin blocker with ghost type, it's an alright spin blocker. I can also get some status with will o -S and things like that. Infotrier allows to hit through substitutes, so that's good. Pangoro, I love my Pangoro, one of the best setup supers in my personal opinion. Gets uh, access to priority, which is bullet punch, and it also gets an iron fist boosted, so that means that it is actually base power 48 instead of 40. It's typing makes it four times weak to fairy, but luckily in this format for it, there are no HP fairies, so that means that you can't hit this thing four times as super effectively as you might be able to do with things like Seismitoad or Glyscore, which are four times root hidden for grass and ice. Next up, Agron, it can be a very bulky rock setter, especially on the physical side, or it can just be an incredible wall breaker with choice fan head smashes. And finally, Venusaur. Venusaur has actually got a lot of potential in draft league format, but people don't really use it to its full extent. Usually, this is an offensive Pokemon, which is what is best at admittedly, but I've used Curse Venusaur in the past with things like, uh, with things like Power Whip, Knock Off, and Earthquake, and that thing has just functioned very well. Especially in Gen 6 O year, I remember using this thing and it actually did a lot of work in the meta, hit a lot of things, and I'm might be using it now in Generation 7 and OU just for like, you know, why not, let's try and do that. I'm not really that much of a competitive battler at all, I just kind of have fun. 
If I lose, I lose. If I win, I lose. If I, if I win, I lose. If I win, I win. Oh well. Uh, and I think that that kind of just relaxed attitude as well has been keeping my morale high throughout the draft league format and really just get me the results that I really want. But let's go to what Pokemon I decided to bring and first splice in. So our first Pokemon here is our Zapdos. Nickname Flydos, you're gonna be seeing as you can see from the Pokemon up here that we have just decided to put in Fly and everything. You know, you guys know that for every secondary week I put in a chill nickname and just have a bit of fun. Last uh, in week two versus Shiny, I needed only Pokemon Shiny for him. So this time I just added Fly and the name and hopefully for a quest I can do something fun for my boy, but Flydos uh, is going to be my bulky default, there was enough defensive investment to live a liquidization from a Mystic Water, uh, Araquanid, I can't remember if it was Choice Band or Mystic Water, but it's definitely one of the two, uh, it has uh, uh, enough speed so that if someone's trying to outspeed me, then I will actually in turn outspeed them, and I have enough special defense investment just left over, so I can sponge a few special uh, defensive hits. I was going to run HP Ice, but I was playing a practice game versus Riolu where he was using Flyzone's team, and HP Ice really was not that good. I actually got walled by the Mega Venusaur, and I actually had to end up PP stalling it out of Leech Seeds and Sludge Bombs. Actually, no, I didn't have Sludge Bomb, I had a PP stall out of Leech Seeds so that I could beat it. But yeah, this Pokemon that Air Cutter can hit other things like Pangoro, Mega Venusaur, and. Uh, I think that's it. I, I might be missing another Pokemon uh, with Air Cutter, but I believe those are the main two that I want to target. We have got Flynex, my Phoenix, except Fain, of course, is replaced with Fly, as my music cuts out for some reason. Oh, you guys were okay. It actually turns out the Wi Fi went out for some reason, but we are back. So, this is Flynex, my um, somewhat counter to Garchomp. It takes outrages and potentially burns with flame body. I resist earthquake and I can take a stone edge because my Baviri Berry. Baviri Mo Berry Moltres is something that I didn't think I had to bring more than one week. But I've had to bring it more than one week, admittedly. This set has got Air Slash, Willow Wisp, Fire Blast, and Roost, so I can counter most of his team, if not all of it. I kind of struggle, struggle against um, special defensive Togetic. But apart from that, I think I'm alright. I can burn things like the Armaldo if he does bring it, and I resist its uh, rock stabs. And I can just uh, burn his Mega Venusaur as well because it could be a physical variant as well. We next up have my. Oh, yeah, but I can't remember what the speed investment was for. It was. Uh, I think it was Start Speed Max Speed Mega Venusaur. Uh, next up, we have got our Flangela. Our Tangela, my, this is my favourite nickname. But Tangela's been putting in the work as a defensive wall. It hasn't really been getting many kills, but as a tier 5, it's been a very solid tier 5 indeed. Having Leech Sheet, Hidden Power Ice, Toxic, and Knock Off. Now, the Garchomp is such a threat to my team, especially if it is a Sword Stance variant, so I had to bring two walls to it. So, my second wall is a more reliable wall in Tangela. I can Seeds versus things, I can Toxic things, knock them off if they are the two get it. Or the chandelier, and also I can hit Power Ice. This is mainly just for the guard chomp, but of course, if I can hit the Yam Mega as well, that'd be pretty nice. Next up, we have got Gardevoir, our Fly Guard. Of course, with the Choice Scarf, when are we never gonna be bring cho Choice Scarf Gardevoir? And for all you guys that are planning to uh, prep for Choice Scarf Gardevoir, there may, not, there may be a week where I don't bring Choice Scarf Guard of War and I bring the Fence Wish variant and then what are you going to do? So, you know, these mind games have bought. I've got three attacks and healing wish uh, Guard of War. I have got enough speed on this, I believe, to outspeed a 252. Got, no, no, it wasn't that. Uh, this is going to annoy me now because uh, oh, it was to outspeed the A self, I believe. Uh, 242, that looks around Azelf speed, so I'm going to presume this is to outspeed Azelf, and I have got Sight Shock, Thunderbolt, Moonblast, and Healing Wish. I'm expecting this Pokemon to put in a lot of work, at least get one or two kills this game, and this coverage is really good. I can Healing Wish into my Mega Tyranitar if I do need to, and then I can start destroying things after nuking Infernape's team last week. 
Mega Tyranitar has returned with six kills under its belt in one game. Uh, we are bringing more defensive variants of Mega Tyranitar. I say more defensive when I run uh, when I run 160 attack on an adamant nature, but uh, I can. Uh, I've got three attacks. I have stealth rocks on this, and unfortunately, I have not brought Reggie Steel yet, which is so sad because Reggie Steel. I really want to use it in this draft, but unfortunately, po Pokemon are just going to run low kick for it. They're going to run fire coverage, so I haven't really found the best. Uh, I haven't really found best matchups yet to bring Reggie Steel. But we have got our wall breaking Mega Tyranitar, which can set up rocks. This coverage is pretty good versus this team. The only thing that can really wall us is the Milotic, and if it isn't Flame Orb, that's still going to be taking a considerable, a considerable amount of damage. Like our Quake is probably going to be doing about 25-30%, which is nice. And our final Pokemon is a pretty special set. Finally, we're being a bit creative in our sets, but we are bringing a Rest Talk Gudra with a really weird EV spread. We've got two two hundred. 152 in HP, 140 in defense, 100, uh, 100 in special attack, and 16 in speed. With a modest nature, I can't even remember what this is for. And can these guys really be blame me? Um, in hindsight, I should have brought Sap Sipper on this Pokemon really, so I can really wall the Mega Venusaur in case it tries to use Sage versus me. But uh, Gooey is still useful for things like the Pangoro, so that I can outspeed it with my Moltres. Uh, and this coverage uh, beats his team. Dragon and Thunderbolt coverage uh, beats his team. Uh, I can Dragon Pulse most of his mods and the things that resist Dragon Pulse, which is like the Togetic. I can Thunderbolt. He has got a Steel type, uh, which is Agron, which still takes a considerable amount from Thunderbolt. So we're going to be going onto the replay and seeing how our battle went. Okay guys, so this is the battle versus Fly Zone. He has brought his Mega Venusaur, his Guard Chomp, his Jilteon, Azelf, Pangoro, and Milotic. Now, in the tester game, which was me versus Usman, I believe Usman brought Yamega instead of Azelf, but he got the 5 out of 6 of the Mons right, so I have to congratulate my guy. Thank you, Usman, by the way, for doing uh, a battle with me just so I can study Flyzone's team and really make a few adjustments especially as I said previously updating HPI Zap goes to now Air Cutter Zap goes so I can do a bit of damage we're gonna go uh, start this battle now we're gonna go uh, from team preview so I need off the of Zap goes just the safest lead honestly I can take any hit from my opponent and he does lead with Jolteon so I wanna, wanna say the thing specs or life warp so he goes for Volt Switch, and I looked that up, and that isn't doing specs damage, but he doesn't take life orb damage. So I'm, I'm fully expecting, like, um, I'm fully expecting uh, it to be Expert Belt or Leftover. So I go for the Air Cutter, miss the Pangoro, which is a nightmare because I could have literally got about 60% of damage off against this thing. I go into Moltres, knowing this Pokemon wants to go for a knockoff, it risks being burned. So he goes back out into Jolteon again, I guess, in case, because uh, he knows that I've got Air Cutter and his Jolteon can wall my Zapdos, which unfortunately it can't. I go into my Gudra, my response is Pokemon, and I just chew that hit. Gudra is such a great Pokemon. Can we just talk about how great Gudra is? Gudra has been the wall for the team. I told you guys um, in my, in my um, explanation of the team. Gudra was going to be my one-man wall, and what is it doing right now as being my one-man wall? So, expect him to go for the Dragon-type attack, or for the Ground-type attack, and go into Moltres, even if he does go for Stone Edge, and I got the Daviri Berry, so as you not worry. So, he goes out into Milotic, as I just decided here to go for Fire Blast. I really expected him to maybe not go into the Milotic, but try and go into the Jolteon just to get uh, a strong head off and make an aggressive play, but of course he's out to my lot, I could play on his end, as he is going to be taking barely any damage. And by this point, I was just thinking, oh gosh, this guy's out playing me. Went for the ice beam, expecting my Zapdos switch in, or I, I guess it was more for the Gucha, but it definitely covered the Zapdos as well. I chewed that hit, of course, because I am Zapdos, and I go for the Roost. And because of pressure now, he is actually going to be losing four uh, ice beams now. So I was looking at the PP, and I was like, hmm. I could start stalling this thing out. 
Sorry for the skip of music, I just had to uh, re-update it because I think you guys can see a little bit of the pause button from the reset button, so I just had to move this screen up a little bit. But I go on to Gudra, uh, which I know can take an HPI or whatever, so he does show Toxic under my law, like I presume he did have Toxic. I, I guess it's the two attacks, Recover and Toxic variant, so he goes to the Toxic, I go for the Thunderbolt, show I have it, and he decides to go for the Recover here, uh, which... I was like, oh, seriously, he's going to start stalling me out, but it's going to be kind of humorous once you see the, the end conclusion of this game. So uh, I expect him going to Jolteon to try and be immune to my electric, or uh, yeah, my electric type attack. Fortunately, he doesn't, and I just get blown back by an ice beam. So now this takes me down to 20%. I do outspeed with my Lodic, and I don't really expect him to be running enough speed to be on 200 speed, because it doesn't really outspeed any of my team. So I go to, uh, I use my rest, go to sleep, eat my Chester Berry, and I'm at max health again. So we're going to have to do this run through again. Fly zone. So uh, I, I go into my Tangle, and I only take an ice beam. Uh, best case scenario is if he's for Toxic, as he does go for Toxic. So I try to get him with a Toxic back. If I can Toxic this Milotic, although it means that I can wall my Mega Tyranitar, it will reduce this Pokemon's walling uh, by a lot. But unfortunately, he does go into Venusaur, which, in hindsight, you know, why would you not switch out a Poison and Grass type, which four times resists uh, my Grass type uh, stab moves? It absorbs seeds, it takes the Toxic, so. I was kind of an idiot there, I didn't realise that, so I go around to Gudra, which honestly has just been, like, there, there hasn't been probably five turns in this battle where one of them has not been Gudra being sent out, so I go for the Dragon Pulse, I shoot a Sludge Bomb, and I know right here that he's gonna try and fish for a poison. I can take four of them though, presuming that he is not gonna get a poison, so I go for another Dragon Pulse as he goes for Synthesis, but that's alright because I am stalling him out of Synthesis if I do want to play that game, so I go swap side his uh, Mega Venusaur, as I decide to go for the rest here, oh no I don't go for the rest, I go for the Dragon Pulse, so he goes into my Lodic again, the Lodic's taking a bit of chip damage, and as far as I'm concer concerned, as soon as I stall that Pokemon, out of ice speeds and I can really start hammering it down with Zapdos. But I go for the Thunderbolts and that does a considerable amount of damage. Goes for the ice beam. And it's this turn where I commented that this is going to be a long battle. I knew it was just going to be a long battle. It's 18 turns in and not a single Pokemon had been knocked out. So I go for the rest here again as he does go for the ice beam. I expected him to go for the recover, but uh, he was out of Thunderbolt range anyway. Actually, no. Uh, he should have recovered there, I think that was a bit of a misplay, but he could have doubled out and jilted on and tried to recover still. So I go for the sleep talk, and unfortunately I get rest. It's kind of annoying that I have to rely on sleep talk uh, to let me hit the right moves, as he is going to be restoring it constantly more HP with his leftovers on his Milotic. So I go for the sleep talk again, and I do get pretty lucky, I do finally get a, an attack off. Even though it wasn't the attack that I wanted, I still do get a Dragon Pulse off, which is probably going to force my opponent to go for the cover, in case I do get another lucky sleep talk and manage to hit it with a Thunderbolt. So I go, I know that I slept for three um, turns, and that's the maximum turns you can sleep for, so I go for the rest again, get back up to 100% HP, as he is going to be going for another Ice Pain. And that's fine, because throughout this uh, sleep battle, he has been wasting about 4 or 5 Ice Beams, Plus the Zapdos pressure stall, so that means he's only about he only got about seven or eight left. So I go into Zapdos knowing that I can take an ice beam, even if it is a crit ice beam, I can take whatever. And it does go for recover. That was also what I was planning to do. He would probably recover there. If he if he went for the scald, then I could take it. If he went for the ice beam, I could take it again. So go for the roost, mainly because uh, I didn't want him doubling out into Jolteon again. Uh, a free switch, I kind of wanted him to pay for it, and also Roost takes away your flying typing, so that means that I can um, take the Ice Beam, so yet again, there goes two more PP of Ice Beam, and he's around 6 PP now, so he really is not going to be dealing as much damage as or he is, he really cannot spam, spam my speed as much as he could. I send a Gardevoir here trying to put some offensive pressure up, as I do trace him in the Marvel scale, which is kind of awesome, because that means that now I can take a hit from the Pangoro. 
so with the Milotic, uh, I do show the Thunderbolt in this thing, as it does like, do a lot of damage, it does over 42%. Uh, he is gonna just spam recover now, and I fully expect him to swap out. So we go into Zapdos, and if he does, go, I wouldn't expect him to go for the Ice Beam. Uh, if anything, go for the Scald. And a burn on Zapdos is actually what I want because it means I can't get toxic, and then I can just uh, freely roost. So he does go into Jolteon again, D Volt Switch, which just does so much damage. I really did not invest much special defense into the Zapdos. So, uh, my Zapdos and I is just going to be going for the Air Cutter, as you're going to see, that does literally no damage to the Guard Chomp. And now I'm kind of regretting not putting Hidden Tower Ice on this. This team also didn't have any hazard removal, but I really cannot get a good time to bring in Mega Tyranitar. Trust me guys, I was trying to see if I could bring in Mega Tyranitar. So he shows off some valuable information with Guard Chomp as he does a Brock Slide. So I know that uh, my Moltres can be getting off the Sneaky Air Slash or a will o -Wisp. Because he is not going to be expecting the Beery Berry on that Moltres. So he goes out into his Mega Venusaur. As I am going to go for my Hidden Part Ice. Unfortunately, show that off. The Mega Venusaur with a thick fat is just going to chew that hit so well. So I'm forced to swap out my Tangela. It is my main response to Guard Sean. As he is just going to be firing off another Sludge Bomb. But I'm slowly stalling this Mega Venusaur out of attacks. I've stalled out. Like, one or two synthesis of this Pokemon, a few sludge bombs. As he's gonna be going out in the guard shop, I went for the sleep talk here because I had only burnt like a turn if at most sleep turns. And I get very lucky here and managed to get my sleep talk of Dragon Pulse. Does make up for my air cutter miss on the Pango first turn, so you can't say that I didn't get uh, uh, unjustified luck right there, okay? Because that Pango should be a lot lower of HP if, if I did not miss. Plus also I did Gooper Sleep Talk and I got rest like once, so that was really annoying as well. So unfortunately I am going to be staying asleep now for uh, a, another turn, so that means that the Azel can fully fire off a Psy Shock. So I go into my Mega Tyranitar, uh, into my Tyranitar, no, I, can, I can take a hit. Dazzling Gleam is annoying because it does deal a lot of damage and I'm kind of scared of this thing being Fairy and Z, but luckily I managed to catch it with Pursuit. Mega Tyranitar wasn't useful in this battle at all, I just needed for the sand to try and uh, stop Mega Venusaur from its synthesis healing up so much. So I go for the Pursuit, manage to catch the uh, Azelf, and I then Oko it. So Mega Tyranitar, even with a defensive variant, it is managing to pick up a sneaky KO. There goes my boy. I go into Moltres, and then I can take the big drain, which I 99% expect this Mega Venusaur to go for. It's free recovery, and with the sand up, you can't really go for the sludge bomb and then try and rely on synthesis. So I go for air slash here so I'm going to be doing a huge amount of damage as I do flinch the Mega Venusaur down. I really do not know why he stayed in. He could have swapped out and jolted on. I thought it was pretty obvious. I had air coverage for this thing. Originally I had Hurricane but then I swapped to air slash just to be more reliable. And Hurricane, I don't think it could Mega Venusaur anyway but um, but um, it definitely would have been a bit more useful there just so that I could have okoed it. But out comes Pangoro, I'm going to be going for my Air Slash here. I think by this point he just kind of heal up. He goes for the Fire Punch, I think he expected Tangela to come in because it was my physical defense pivot. As I did show it to be my switch in to the Guard Chomp. So go for the Roost here, trying to heal up some HP. I know this Pokemon cannot do anything versus me. As he does go for the Crunch, I kind of expected the knockoff on this Pokemon because I do have uh, Tangela and my War Turtle on my team as of currently. However, I did swap it back for a little Sand Slash, so I actually used up my three agents just for swapping them. So that's kind of unfortunate. So I comes uh, my Lodic. Again, of course, to counter it, I just go into my Tangela if it does go for the, H if the Ice Beam and whatever. It goes for the Skull, however, so that means that I can take this and an Ice Beam from my Tangela. Even though I'm not special defense invested, that a Violite is going to be boosting my special defense quite a bit. So I do take that hit, in fact, and I do manage to get off a Toxic. At least what I thought until I discovered that Pokemon can dodge attacks and be nuisances. So my Tangela unfortunately is going to go down as 
he recovers, and I'll just manage to get off a Toxic. I think by this point he just kind of gave up. And I think Flyzer might be leaving the draft because of time constraints with exams and things like that. Honestly, I don't know why so many people have joined this league and just started to leave just because of the exams. Like, I'll probably be in this league still, even though exams will be going on. Uh, I'll try and make time for it, but you know, what can you do? You you try to join a league, which uh, it was originally supposed to be 18 weeks, but I dropped it down to 10 and still people are leaving, so uh, oh well, but um, I just do a bit of stalling with the Zapdos, so now he is only going to be on one Ice Beam, I believe, so now I can go for my Volt Switch here, I don't really care if I boost up the Jolteons. Uh, HP with the Volt Absorb anymore, I've already done my damage, and Gardevoir can come in and just click Moonblast. Also Gudra, Hard Walls, the Jolteon, however it is on low HP, so I'm going to have to bring it in as a revenge kill. So Moltres comes in, I chase Scald, and he is on very low HP. I decide to go for the Fire Blast here, kind of a risky play in case he was especially defensive, but I couldn't risk him doubling out into the Jolteon and keeping that monster up in my logic alive. So he goes out into the Jolteon aka Speed and he is going to be able to knock me down with a Thunderbolt. But now I can go into Gudra and I can wall him. So that is basically how this battle went. I really do apologize to my opponent Fly Zone. I did not go into the battle with the intent to stall him. As you can, guys can see, I actually did try my very hard to like my very hardest to bring um, reliable offense with Mega Tyranitar, uh, with, with Gardevoir, with Moltres being fully specially offensive. And honestly, this Gudra set just seems so good versus his team with the Thunderbolt and Dragon coverage, which just annihilated all of his Pokemon. So I can't really say that I'm sorry for bringing the rest to a Gudra set, which. I personally um, knew would do work against this team even though I did sort of end up stalling him a little bit with my Zapdos pressure and Guja but I'm putting a statement out there I guess to the players just don't be afraid of my offense be afraid of my defense because I have got a pressure Zapdos it is one of the top stall Pokemon in OU in the entire game actually because of pressure but Thanks guys for watching that video, we did win 4-0 against Flyzone and I hope no one else has done their battles yet but I hope to retain our number one place in the PBA. If you did enjoy, make sure to go leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video, goodbye.